Hello and welcome to the table. And here's a playthrough for B-17 Flying Fortress Leader. Um, <clears throat> so I've owned this one for a long time. Um, I uh, never did a video for it. It's been on my list. And um, this is for a DVG game. I would say it's probably one of the heaviest ones I've played. Um, there's a lot going on in this game. And for a leader game, it's double what a normal leader, leader game has. So um, <clears throat> I'm going to go through what I usually do. And we're going to do setup. We're going to talk about the components. If you're not interested in any of that, go to a video tip. Um, if you're interested in the setup, whatever, just sit tight. And we're going to jump in and, and get going. So uh, the first thing uh, we need to do is we need to decide what mission we're going to do. And if you've never played before, you should do The Air War Begins. Um, I actually really like this campaign. It's a nice long campaign. I'm a big fan of long campaigns when I play a leader game. Uh, the thing I enjoy the most about leader games, uh, or even Skies Above the Reich, is that um, I love the RPG elements to this game. I'm a huge level up kind of person. I really enjoy that in a game, and that's what draws me to these games over and over again. This is a nice long one. You go from August to December. Um, that's pretty long in this game. I mean, it doesn't seem long, but it is. Um, so uh, anyways, this is a wonderful first one. Um, most of the missions, if I remember correctly, are over France, and, um, and so that allows us to uh, focus on a specific part of the map. Uh, it makes the missions easier. Um, we won't be intercepted as much from the Luftwaffe. Uh, all kinds of uh, things go in our favor. And there's even like uh, bonuses here. And here you can see we're only going to hit targets that are uh, between AC-01 to AC-14. That means it's over France. So these ones, if you, if you go through the deck and pull out these ones, you'll see that they're only French targets um, or Belgium or Netherlands. Um, but it won't be deep in Germany. That's the point. Um, so early on, we're just hitting, you know, the, the coast and going into France, if anything. Um, now, I did not do some of that, and uh, we'll, we'll talk about it as we go. But this is what you need. You have to decide what to do. We're going to do this one. If you've never played before, by all means, do this one. Everything else will get easier if you just do this one first. And so we will do that. And... Um, and maybe we'll do several. I really enjoy this game. Um, it, there's a lot going on. Um, sometimes it takes a while. Uh, but I do really enjoy this game. So, um, so with that being said, I won't go into all the details yet. Let's go over components. What do you need um, if you're going to do a campaign like this or any campaign, really? Um, uh, if this is your first ever leader game, uh, I apologize because I do sometimes reference other leader games or typical DVG stuff, uh, but here we go. Um, you have uh, pilots, and or this is actually, normally you have what's called a pilot, which is an individual plane, but in this game, it's a bomber group. So everything is a BG, which stands for bomber group, or FG, which is a fighter group. So this one picture represents... Um, 16 individual planes. Um, so uh, a bomber group consists of 16 planes, at least according to the rulebook. Um, I don't know how that fits historically. I trust that the designer probably looked that stuff up and knows way more about it than, than uh, he ever cares to admit. Um, so uh, this is your typical thing, and you're going to have three cards of it. So the thing that's important is this is an average skill level um, bomber group. This is a skilled bomber group, a recruit, um, a green ace, and then this one should be veteran. Yep, it's veteran. Okay, so, um, you know, what does all that mean? Well, as the group gains experience points, remember this has got the RPG elements, you're going to go from one side of one card to, you know, another. So, for example, if Death Dealer is in my game, I'm only ever going to use one face of these three cards. So it's either if he's a recruit and then eventually he gets enough experience points, he's going to level up and be, uh, is it green? I'll have to look it up. But let's say uh, 
yeah, let's say he's average, he levels up, he gets six experience points, he's gonna become skilled. That part I know is the right order. I think uh, green is before recruit. I think you're a green first and then you're a recruit. I'll look it up. Um, the point is, uh, you only ever have one face. So whenever you're dealing with these cards, you're going to uh, put them like this and just hide the other two cards underneath it. That's what I do. However, so, so first thing you need to do is the year of your mission that you pick. So we picked 1942 to 1942. So everything's in 1942, okay? So you have to pick out your planes that say 1942 plus. And when you pick them out, just understand there's three cards that have the same name on them. Keep them all together. So what I have here are a bunch of planes that have been sorted that all say 1942. And you can see here it's not a very big stack. Um, probably the one drawback to this game is if you play like Corsair Leader, there's like a, a boatload of choices. Uh, in this, there is not. Um, uh, you don't have a lot of... Uh, bummer groups to choose from or fighter groups for that matter now over here uh, is a lot bigger stack but you can see this is for 1945 and once you get into 1943 a lot of things open up for you and you do get a lot more choices but in 1942 you don't have a lot of choices um, so there's good and bad to that I mean obviously you want selection so you want more choices well that if that's the case do a mission that's 1943 or later um, but what's wonderful about this being like sort of a tutorial mission is you don't have to make a lot of analysis paralysis here because um, you don't have that much to choose from to begin with. So um, what I like to do is I like to sort them by type. So for example, these are two B-24s, which I think are the Liberators. And, uh, and then these are your only fighter groups, the Spitfires. Um, they all have the name Spitfire, by the way, but you can see that this is the fourth fighter group, and, and you'll see there's still three cards for the fourth fighter group, etc. Okay, so then you got two sets of fighter groups, and then the rest of these should be B-17s, which is the whole point of this game, right? It's B-17 leader. I gave Dan Verson a hard time because he made Tiger leader, and then the update kit, and there's only one damn Tiger in the entire game. <laughs> um... <laughs> So uh, it's a very fun game, don't get me wrong, but it sort of defeats the point. There's only one tiger in the whole game. <laughs> it's called Tiger Leader. Um, <clears throat> uh, granted, I think historically he's right. There weren't that many tigers, but still. Um, okay. <clears throat> so uh, the other thing uh, that you need to do is there's a lot of cards. Sort them. Um, you're going to have these secondary mission cards. Let's start with these. So um, obviously you're gonna have a big stack that you can shuffle up, but you need to go and get rid of anything that's not 1942. So for example, uh, ETO tactical mission is not happening. Operation Crossbow 3 is not happening. Neither is two. Um, torch support wood and so forth. So you gotta go through and find anything that's 1942, uh, get rid of anything that's 1943 uh, or higher. Um, so I apologize I didn't do this ahead of time, um, but we're going to do it because this is exciting YouTube TV here. All right, so uh, I want you to just look at this. This is all out of the game. So this entire thing is out of the game, and then this is what's in the game. <laughs> look at this. So... Um, that's the thing. Uh, there's just not a lot of 1942 missions, uh, and that's fine because in I, the one thing, and I probably need to stop saying it, is this game has a lot of historical flavor to it, and it's pretty. Uh, Dean made a uh, made it pretty accurate. So these are the types of missions that happened in 42, and there weren't that many. So go ahead and just shuffle them up, and then um, they go in the secondary target. Like so. Now, there's two secondary target spots. Um, I'm just going to explain this now. When you do missions, um, you have a, you know, a calendar here. And for any given month, uh, it'll tell you how many weeks are in a month. Um, and then uh, for a given week, uh, you have, I'm sorry, for a given month, you, you, know, you, you go through the number of weeks that the month says you have. Uh, obviously, the summer months are more busy than the winter months. Uh, you've got to assume that 
you know, if you have a two week month like December, then that just means um, that, uh, you know, they're taking breaks for Christmas and repairs and whatnot. Now you can see there, it says secondary mission and it shows March through November. Um, that's very important because what, so what's happening here is we're gonna draw a secondary target card and it's gonna flip over, okay? And it's gonna just stay on top of the stack. So it's gonna flip over right on top of the stack. So then for the first month, we can try to succeed at destroying whatever the secondary target is. But if we, let's say we fail to succeed or, or we fail to do the, the mission, the mission moves over to here. And that represents that we're on our final month. So you can sort of, you can ignore this for the first month. And then when we move to month number two, it'll move over to here. And then, and then we have, at the end of that month, if we still haven't succeeded in our secondary mission, then there's going to be some kind of penalty written on the card that's going to happen to us. So at the start of the game, we have two months to accomplish this secondary mission, whatever it's going to be. Okay? So that's the other reason why you don't need a big stack of cards. I mean, one card is going to last you two months. Now, if you do somehow succeed at destroying the secondary target after just one month, you do get another one. <coughs> and then the two month timer starts again. Um, so uh, that's the, the first thing. I know it seems complicated, but just understand that's why you have two columns. Um, and then the target, of course, is for whatever target we choose for the each week. Every week we get to do two missions. And so, uh, you know, we can do uh, the primary target for the first mission, and we can actually do another primary target for the second mission. Or we can do um, the secondary targets, of course. Um, uh, well, actually, no, 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 I, I apologize. This secondary target here uh, is not something we actually do for a mission. This will cause targets to appear along the top. See how it says target one, target two, target three? Those are your targets. We get to do two of those a week. Um, there's going to be a whole bunch of them up there by the time we're done with our setup. Um, it's a very cool game. You're going to have lots of choices in this game. If you're a person who has a lot of analysis paralysis, this game is not for you. Um, if you're playing solitaire and you have a lot of analysis paralysis and you don't annoy yourself, then this game might still be for you. Because, <laughs> um, you know, you take your time. It's your game. Um, nobody has to watch you um, or wait on you. And that's the big thing. Okay, so continuing with the cards. Uh, we have the airfield target cards. Again, uh, the mission said uh, we're supposed to sort them. I have not sorted them. When we draw one, you know, I'm going to just pick something in the middle of the deck. If we draw one, see how it has the French flag on the top left? That's actually one of our cards, AF06. In fact, it is. It says uh, right here, AF01 to AF16, okay? So this one is one of ours. Let me grab a different one. Oh, I keep grabbing French ones. Lucky me. Trust me, there's German ones in here. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna put the camera down. There we go. There's a German one. So see, it has the German flag versus the French flag. They're very easy. I think whoever came up with this graphic, uh, I don't know if it was Dean himself, but this is amazing. Because so what I do is I don't go through and, and remove the cards. I just draw them and uh, it's very easy to see if it's in our campaign or not. And if it's not in our campaign, then I discard it. Okay, so it just saves me some setup time. I know my videos are long-winded, I get it. Um, but I'm just trying to be helpful here. So uh, same deal with the uh, aircraft factories up here. So you have the airfield targets, you have the aircraft factory targets. Uh, there's German commanders. I apologize, I'm not OCD enough to to flip them around. Um, and all these are upside down. Some of them are, I guess. So uh, you're going to have a German defense commander and then the event deck. Um, I probably should sleeve these deck, that deck, because we do shuffle that an awful lot. Um, and then you're going to have this, which is going to overwhelm you. Um, just understand that this is just the secondary mission deck that we just sorted out. So. And then everything here, the transportation targets, the V weapons, the special weapons, oil, ball bearing. Uh, this is a special weapon, the HO229, the, the cannon, vehicle factory, the U-boat pen, and the naval port. These are all different types of targets. 
Now, what causes them to get drawn into the game? It's usually the secondary mission card. So that secondary mission card could be that we need to destroy a U-boat pen or we have to destroy naval ports. So then what it'll do is it'll instruct us to draw three naval port you know, targets and then those will end up bing, bing, bing right up there along the top. And so those decks of cards are just set off to the side and you draw them as you're called to or need to, okay? Otherwise, they're not in the game. Sometimes this card will put them in the game. Uh, but most of the time, it's just done through your secondary mission, okay? Um, your primary mission is really to score victory points, okay? These airfields are going to always be targets available for you. And every time you destroy an airfield, another one pops up, okay? Those are like almost like unlimited targets. The factory targets, you're going to get like three a month or something like that. Um, don't quote me on it. And um, after you destroy three in one month, then you got to wait until the next month for them to build more. And then after they build more, then you get to destroy them again. Okay? So that's sort of like how this goes. This isn't about, you know, we have a primary mission. Your primary mission is whatever this card says. So some of these cards will tell you that you get double victory points for, uh, for destroying, you know, naval ports. This one here says we have to get at least 10 airfields. If we don't destroy 10 airfields, we automatically lose. And that's saying at the end of the campaign. So we got a long, long time to destroy 10 airfields, okay? Um, but uh, if you want to say what is our primary target, well, our primary thing is to destroy 10 airfields. Trust me, we're going to do that in our sleep. Um, so uh, I don't think that's going to be an issue. Okay, uh, so we got everything out uh, card-wise. Now, how about the rest of the components? Well, there's a lot of them. And uh, the first thing I want to point out is that there's a mini game. And in the mini game, you're going to have a lot of tokens that have these little plus one, minus ones. Don't get them mixed in with everything else. Make sure you get those sorted out right away and in their own bag. Because this is a game that's played on its own. It doesn't use the board. It's, it's a mini game. So um, make sure uh, you keep those out. And then there's also some uh, Down in Flames crossover counters. Um, again, separate them. In fact, I think uh, some of these that are in here are my are Down in Flame ones. I um, didn't take the time to figure out which ones were which. They're in a separate bag. I never open this bag. It just stays in the box. Okay. As for everything else, um, I am going to play with every variant in the game. At least, I think every variant. Um, and we're going to get a lot of bonus SO points. SO points are special operation points. They're basically like your economy. They represent how much uh, you know your, your industry power is, how much income you have, how much influence you have. Uh, you name it, it's just a, it's a, it's a monetary figure. Um, we get a lot of, we're going to be playing with some uh, variants that are going to make the game more difficult. And in doing so, we get bonus SO points at the start of the game. Uh, those SO points are awesome, and the bonus ones are nice, and I really believe that um, uh, they do make up for whatever penalty we're going to incur. Um, so, uh, very nice, uh, very happy with it. Um, but we're going to do that, and I'll explain that as we continue setup. We are also going to do um, the B-17 Flying Fortress Leader Single Bomber Variant Log. So uh, this represents, so uh, here. Let's say the Berlin Sleeper is a bomber group, right? It has 16 individual planes inside of it. We are going to be one of those individual planes. If we get to pick which group we want to be a part of, but we're going to do a role playing of one of the individual planes that are inside of the Berlin sleeper. So, um, so for example, uh, it, it doesn't matter which plane it is. We're just going to be one of them. Okay. And so that one plane is going to be this one and it's called trepidation. I named it. And, uh, we have a pilot and co-pilot and we have a whole crew. So we have Jeff and Dean Brown who's my co-pilot with Dan Verson is my navigator, Sarah is my bombardier, Kevin Verson is the engineer, Holly Verson is radio operator, Andrew, who's my first subscriber and my most active, um, uh, is gonna be the ball gunner, 
Chuck Norris is our waist gunner because it's Chuck Norris. And then we got Sly Stallone and John McClane um, for our other gunners. Okay, so the only token you need for this is this one that just says bomber. Okay, and we're going to use it because we're going to have to decide where we are in the bomber group. Because remember, that one card represents 16, right? 16 bombers. So we're going to be one of these bombers in the group. We're either going to be the lead, the front, the rear, or the middle. Okay? Um, now, there's a lot of rules with it. I will get you through those. There's a lot of tables, which are a lot of good fun. So we're going to be doing some die rolling. Um, we start with three experience points, which I think we get to spend right away. Uh, Dean, your rules don't explain that, and it should. Um, I do believe we get to do it. Um, and uh, uh, beyond that... This is a lot of fun. So um, we're going to start off as a recruit crew uh, on our very first mission together. So that's what these boxes at the top mean. So we're going to get a huge penalty because <laughs> we suck. Uh, but if we can survive and stay alive over enough missions, uh, we become awesome sauce. So um, what I am curious about is I don't know if there is such a thing as 21 missions in one campaign. Um, so I don't know how easy it is to become an ace. Um, but uh, anyways, uh, that's our situation. Now, um, our plane at the start, uh, we get uh, on a roll of an eight or above, uh, we would do damage if we were being attacked from this direction. That's sort of what you see here. If we're being attacked from the front, we got to roll a nine or better, etc. And so we can expend two experience points to add plus one to our DRM. So we need an 8 or above to hit, but we can add a plus 1, which means we only need a 7 or above to hit. Um, so those are things we can do. We have a mechanic that can fix our damage for a 7 or above, or we can spend experience to improve that. Um, I hope you're getting the, the hang of it. Um, so that's the, uh, the idea. So we can keep adding, spending experience points to add DRM. Now, when I say experience points, this individual plane has its own experience points that's separate from the bomber group. The bomber group has experience points, and then we have our own experience points. So um, that is the one complication that uh, you have to decide uh, whether or not you want to handle that. And we get experience points earned based on where we are in the pack. Trust us. Trust me. We're not going to be a lead anytime soon, because in order to be a lead, we have to roll on this table... Um, nope, this table. You have to roll 11 or better to become a lead. <laughs> it's only a 10-sided die, folks. And we start with a skill modifier of minus 2. <laughs> so we're not going to be the bomber lead as a, uh, as a uh, recruit. Um, and, and oh, by the way, that answers our question. Recruit is less than green. So uh, we now have that answer. Okay, <clears throat> so grab your little token, set it aside. Uh, one other thing before I put this back is I have this. Um, this is a, a mounted board that came with my copy. I think it was a stretch goal. Okay, it's both awesome and awful at the same time. Um, it's a blow up of what you see in the middle here. And the reason it's blown up is because this is where most of the action occurs and there's gonna be a lot of tokens that go on here. So obviously the blow up one is really nice because you can have more space to, to maneuver and, and deal with all the tokens. Here's the problem. Where do I put it? This board is huge all the way across. And then I got this thing that's uh, sort of on the side. Um, this board would have been awesome if this right panel was in the middle and this middle panel was on the right and it was designed in such a way that I could just fold the board underneath, right? So this right panel just disappears. And then I only use this panel and this panel, and then I can slide this in, right? And, um, and then get some magic. Um, but as it is, uh, I would either have to always turn the camera sideways, right? And then we would play this way. Um, that's hard on my back. I'm not gonna do it. So right now I'm just using it as a uh, hard surface so I can write on my sheet. <laughs> that's really what it's going to be. Um, and I might slide it up. I don't know, we'll figure it out. Okay, <clears throat> next, component-wise, um, uh, you will only use this if you're um, doing submarine uh, missions. 
Um, this, I need to... This might be... We'll figure this one out. This one, I think, might uh, go somewhere else. Uh, this is uh, the first variant we're going to do, which is the recon variant. So we have to get intel levels over our targets. And so there's two recon planes we can purchase, so we will have those uh, with us. And then there's a diversion, which I don't think is a variant, but we can actually fly a diversion mission to try to get the Luftwaffe off our tail. So that is the three uh, components there. Uh, you do need them, so just set them off to the side. This is our intel variant. Um, if there's a low intel target, their flak actually gets a bonus against us. Sorry for all my dog fur here. Um, so um, uh, then if it's a uh, medium intel target, uh, that's basically no advantage or disadvantage. And then if we have a high intel on our target, uh, we get plus two to our air to ground bonus rolls and they get a minus two to their flak attack. So um, uh, there's some advantage to getting some high intel on our targets. Um, we are playing the engagement uh, variant. So these engagement tokens, um, basically they're going to be randomly drawn after a mission and our fighter groups, only the fighter groups, uh, basically you're going to run out of fuel. And so this minus four here represents that four of the planes in the group flew back home. So um, think of it as like um, uh, temporary damage, if you will. Uh, they're not really damaged, but if four of the planes were destroyed out of the... Because remember, this is a fighter group. This is a group of 16. If four of them were destroyed, we'd only have 12 left. And so this is saying that four of them returned home, so now you only have 12 left to continue the mission. So um, that's what this means. This is not... And nobody's actually permanently damaged. It's just it's weakening. After uh, an engagement, the fighters just get weaker. And so they're not full strength the whole mission. That's what this is representing, and yes, this is a detriment to us, um, and we get uh, compensation SO points for this, so that's part of the variant. The next variant is this one. It's using all these tokens, and these are uh, weather. So we're going to play with weather, and weather sucks. Let's just be blunt about it. Um, and this is not a weather token, so let me get that out of there. Um, but yes, we're going to draw weathers and uh, they could hinder us quite a bit. That tile I drew out is this one, and they all say tactics on one side, so you could actually randomize them, right? Because you can put them this side down, but these are all tactics, and um, our various uh, bomber groups and fighter groups could end up getting these tactics, which will help them. Uh, for example, this is a plus three air-to-air -air bonus uh, that a fighter could have. A uh, really wonderful bonus, Probably the best in the game. Um, so uh, that's that's the idea there. Um, just set them in their own little bucket and off to the side. Um, okay. <clears throat> we have tons and tons of... Uh, so we have one of these for every card in the game. So for example, I have the Spitfire 4th Fighter Group. There is a 4th Fighter Group somewhere in here. Um, I think these are the fighter groups in one pile, and then I put the bomber groups in another pile. So when we select who we're going to take with us on the mission, I'm sorry, in the, in the campaign, uh, I'm going to have to uh, basically do like a fantasy football draft of drafting these and, um, and selecting who I want to be on my team. Um, maybe it's a kickball draft in, you know, in gym class. Uh, the only difference is, is whoever gets selected last won't be crying and having to need therapy for the rest of his life. Um, <clears throat> so um, the, um, the big thing with these is that there's another variant where we're going to have wing groups. So the wing group is that I am now required to um, these, for example, two to four of these are going to be in a wing group and they must do missions together. They can never do missions separate from each other. Um, so that is a constraint on me, but that constraint, I get rewarded with more SO points. So um, so we'll do that variant as well. It's an annoying variant because uh, you have to remember what your wing groups are, but um, 
the way I play this game is I tend to have wing groups anyways. Um, I play Hornet Leader and all the other leader games that way, where I just have a group that tends to fly together on every mission. So um, uh, I'm not too concerned about the wing group problem, and the extra SO points is always nice. Okay, so uh, then we have here, uh, these, are, um, these are technology tokens. Um, they do all look the same, right? Because they're all different. They're all the same color. Um, you're going to have to persevere through that. But these ones have the solid blue top, and um, and then you can see there's like the little number next to them. Uh, this number is the number of SO points it's going to cost for you to buy this. These are technologies, okay? Technologies obviously you need to have researched. And just so um, you understand. Um, there are zero technologies in the 1942 campaign. So we're not going to get to use those at all for this campaign. Now, um, it is possible, like for example, Operation Point Blank here, which is 1943 to 44. This is a nice long one too. Um, you can see, look, there's a whole bunch of technologies available, and some of them don't become available until midway through the mission, or through the campaign, I mean. So, um, when those technologies become available, um, then you can purchase them for SO points, and then they help you in various ways. Uh, there's a whole chart of it uh, that we can look up, etc. So you don't have to worry about them too much. Uh, it is possible the German commanders will have technology, because the Germans get technology as well. So it's not just you who gets technology, so do they. Uh, very interesting uh, part of the game, I like that. The U-boats, only come out if you have U-boat missions. Um, U-boats are annoying and uh, they cause you to lose SO points every week uh, because they're basically destroying your supply. Um, the uh, tactical targets, uh, we will not be using them, very likely will not be using them. Uh, these are used when uh, D-Day happens and there's the Normandy invasion. These would go in a cup and there's actually like bridges you need to bomb, right? Because you're helping, you're supporting the uh, land war, right? Uh, there's troops we need to bomb, etc. Uh, that uh, is not happening. We're doing strategic air bombing only in 1942. Uh, so there's no uh, ground targets for us to, to go after. Um, so this is sort of like close air support um, is what those types of missions are. Um, so uh, those stay out. Uh, we are playing the veteran variant, which is, um, uh, this just makes the game harder for us, but basically, for a particular year, um, we either add veteran or novice counters to our bandit cup. So in 1942, the Germans are all fresh and fit, so they actually get five veterans, so the bandits go into a cup, um, and we're going to draw those as we do battle. And the veterans, we're going to add five of them. They're going to be, the veterans have a black with a V on them. And then the, um, the noobs have a green N. I do love how they made it really strong. They are pretty easy to spot. And uh, thank you to whoever thought of it, because we need that badly. So three, four, and five. Okay, the, um, the J, um, I think these are a jet. Um, I think there's a campaign or a mission that uses them. There's J for, the, I know for sure the J stands for jets, and I can't remember what the S stands for. Uh, don't use these, they, they're special. They get put into the cup when something uh, specifically tells you to put them in the cup. Okay, so we're gonna put five of them in the cup. Um, and uh, now um, when we face them, if we destroy them, they don't go back in the cup again. So. Uh, these are things that once we eliminate them, they get removed uh, from the game, and um, I don't think, we don't get any bonus SO points for this. That's what's crazy, uh, but it is historically um, uh, more appropriate, and uh, I like the challenge. We're, remember, this is a tutorial mission. We're only flying over France and easy targets. Um, this, this will make the game more interesting. So, uh, famous last words from Jeff. <laughs> okay, moving on. Um, we have the supply tokens. Just set them in their own little tray. Uh, you're going to need them. 
Uh, we have these. These represent the damage to the various targets that we bombed. Uh, you're going to need them. Now, what I do is I actually have, um, I take all my leader games and I combine some components, which means I'll never be able to sell them. Um, but, um, for example, I have all my stress tokens in one container. Um, you don't use them in this game, but I, I use them as extra counters because DVG gives you just barely enough to do everything you need to do. So I do have extra components off to the side. This did not come with the game. I also have extra damage markers, right? These come from the other leader games. Um, this game has its own set of damage markers that are unique, but, um, and then you can see these are all my dice from all the various games. Um, but uh, yeah, I do it because it's simplified and um, uh, now I have a really nice, beautiful uh, tray and I'm never short supply of those types of tokens. Um, okay, this super important. This represents the damage to your bomber groups. Remember we keep saying you have 16 uh, planes or 16 units in your group. Um, so if three of them are destroyed, then you would put a minus three on your, on your card to show that three of them are destroyed. Um, that's the idea. And that's why um, when we draw this uh, engagement and it says escort minus four, they're not actually destroyed, but we would put this on the card to show that four of them are, um, are no longer there. And if three of them were actually destroyed from the fight, then you actually have a net of minus seven. Um, so that's how that works. And um, last but not least, you're gonna have a big stack of, of fighter squadrons or Luftwaffe squadrons. They all are identical, so you can mix them all up. Uh, just have them available. Uh, they're definitely a key component in the game. Okay, so let's get going here uh, with, uh, with playing. So first off, we're gonna have all these build tokens. Uh, these are used to represent the Germans building new factories. Right now, they're not gonna be building new factories, but if we destroy some factories, uh, they will actually, uh, the Germans will start putting uh, build markers out so that the next month, uh, new ones will be built. So you definitely need those. Um, we have some uh, special bandits. Um, I think these. What are these? I think they might be special mission counters. Like there might be a specific target where you're supposed to take out these bandits. Um, I actually don't remember. So uh, we're going to... Hmm. I'll try to figure that out. I don't remember what those are. Um, they are set, this is my special counter uh, container. So clearly they don't go in your bandit cup. <laughs> Just make that clear. These ones, I can tell you, are um, for your mini game, or for the this, so we can show that we have engine damage, for example, or frame damage. Um, so we can uh, use those for this. So I guess I said you only needed that, but those also help. You could also just write it with a pencil. Um, I do like that they gave us counters. Um, this one is just a second bomber token. Um, don't think we needed two. These are the German technology ones. So when uh, Germans start researching technology, and I'll show you how that happens, the German commander is who initiates those. Um, these counters will end up being used. The German technology are green, the American technology are blue. So I do appreciate that they made them different colored. So like I said, these tend to be special mission counters. So that's why those are all there. And yeah, I don't know why I have two Two of these with the bomber. I actually think one of them is for the mini game. Um, so they gave us one for the mini game, one for the uh, single bomber variant. You only need one. So I'm gonna just put the other one there. And then uh, this is my last stack of special counters. So let me get these out. And I know I probably should have gotten them out for you ahead of time, but I wanted to go through them um, if you're one of those people who's impatient, you would have quit a long time ago and moved to video two. So 
Um, so I'm doing this for you, those of you who are still here. Okay, so here's, here's the deal. Uh, this four, three, one, and there should be a two and a five. This represents your flight path, uh, very important. Um, this represents the, the uh, to figure out what that one is. Oh, these are your two missions. So you got bomber group one, bomber group two. And then this is for uh, the fighter battles. So whenever you have fight engaged with uh, bandits, uh, that's what those are for. And then you have theater tokens, which I'm just going to put over here in my tray. Um, so while this battle's going on in Europe, uh, you're going to have the Mediterranean theater represented here, and then the Russian theater represented here. All three theaters are actually in this game. Uh, our actions are only going to be in Europe, but things are going to happen in these other theaters, and we're going to be able to, to indirectly impact them. So uh, this, by the way, is, for example, these are theater modifiers um, that you get um, usually as a reward for uh, succeeding at one of those secondary missions. This theater modifier of minus four, for example, is an awful one. <laughs> usually what you get after failing those secondary missions. Um, so, um, so yes, these various modifiers can be used. And then this one, of course, is just the, the marker. And so I'm just going to set it here for now, and then we'll figure out where it goes based on our uh, campaign. This is extremely important. We're going to be using this, uh, so I'm going to be so going to put that there. That'll be used a lot in this game. Uh, this destroyed marker goes here under the bandits destroyed. Currently, we have destroyed zero. Uh, we do get one experience for every bandit we destroy. And um, if we destroy five of them, then we actually get to remove uh, one of these Luftwaffe air bases. And, um, and then it resets back to zero. So it's just a constantly uh, moving ticker. Um, but it helps us immensely. The DUC is... Um, it's pretty interesting. Uh, I guess some missions, if you succeed at it, um, the lead group, the lead bomber gets plus five experience points. I, I actually never ran into that scenario yet, but um, it sounds awesome. Okay, this, um, uh, the American theater is the ETO, which is the European theater. This is uh, D-Day stuff, okay? We're probably not going to use this one. Um, because uh, these are used when the troops actually land in Europe, which is not going to happen in 1942. So I'm going to put these back in the tray. Definitely not going to use those. Um, oh, there's another Russian one. And then there should be a Mediterranean theater. Yep, that's what these are. And same deal. Uh, they're modifying the Mediterranean theater. And then there's one Mediterranean marker that we will put there for now. And then uh, month, day, week, year. Uh, that's going to go up on the calendar. And then these three uh, are the Luftwaffe response. So this represents the actual response of the Luftwaffe, and this represents a modifier to the uh, die roll for the Luftwaffe. So uh, they can sometimes get a minus one, they can sometimes get a minus two. Uh, in fact, uh, I think I'm missing a token, because, oh, here it is. There's, there's, it's blue. So uh, plus two or minus two. So, um, I'll be able to show you that real quick uh, as well. And then this represents the actual target. So with that being said, uh, the game also comes with miniatures. So I put out uh, a few of them. Uh, they might be difficult to see, but they're right here. Um, they're nice. Um, they're big. I think they're more useful if you're playing with that board. Um, I'm not going to use them. Uh, they just uh, get in the way. Uh, but they are pretty cool. In fact, my son eyes them up and wants to borrow them all the time, and I don't let him. So, mean dad. Sorry, I'm just putting a bunch of them away into the bag here so I don't lose them. And so my son doesn't sneak by and steal them. 
So I think uh, some people go through all kinds of, um, they paint them and all kinds of stuff. I'm not that creative. Okay, all right. Uh, next um, and last are these. These are um, used for, um, they're basically like uh, heroes, if you will, commanders. And um, you can buy them spending special operation points, and then they would they would go with the card. So, for example, little Abner here, um, it's a bomber group. These are bomber group commanders, and these are fighter group commanders. Little Abner here could have uh, this co this token, this commander castle. He would go with the little Abner group, and he would always give them good aim and a replenish of two. Which is, this is actually a really good one. Um, so uh, that's. Uh, something he would do. Okay, so uh, in a basic nutshell, um, how we play is we start up there and we go all the way down to here. <laughs> These are all the steps in the game. There are some steps before uh, we start. So right there at the sequence, week start, uh, we're, we're still doing campaign setup. So once we finish campaign setup, then we would start at the top there and then work our way through. Okay, so this campaign setup uh, does take a bit, and um, what I'm going to do between videos is I'm going to select my my bomber groups and get them and find their tokens and all that stuff, and then I'm going to figure out what kind of how to spend my SO points. But let me explain to you how that works. Uh, first thing we're going to do is get this card out. Okay, so we just go through uh, one by one. So right here, um, the initial groups is it's saying that we're going to get two recruits, one green, and one average. So we're going to start with four bomber groups. Um, uh, they're not free. At least I don't think they are. Um, yeah, we still have to pay for them. Um, but we get, so basically the, what it's saying is, is that uh, one of them has to be average. Uh, two of them have to be a recruit. And then one of them has to be green, okay? Now, if I want a fifth bomber, bomber group, that's fine. That's what this little asterisk means. It means that every one after the fourth one is green. So if I somehow can, can pay for 10 of them, I would have two recruits, one average, and seven green. Now, with that being said, uh, there we can spend, uh, there's an option where we can demote one of them, one of the averages to a green to make one of the recruits a green. So we can demote one to promote another. That's in the rules. It's allowed. Another thing that's allowed is we can spend SO points. I think it's four. I can look at, I have to look it up all the time. It's not written anywhere. Um, I can spend four and, um, and then that would allow me to promote one. So I can make one an ace. Well, uh, I'll check that. Um, let's, let's look real quick. I don't know if I'm allowed to promote one more than once. Um, here we go. For a cost of four, you can promote a group by one level. Um, you just can't exceed your initial points. Um, I think I can promote by more than one level. I just have to have enough points, right? You're spending points every time you do it. You can demote one group by one skill level to promote a different one. That's what we just talked about. You can do this multiple times, but each group can only be a promoter or demoted in this manner one time. Notice here, he doesn't say that. So um, this is unlimited. It's just, you know, four SO points is a lot of SO points in the grand scheme of things. So, um, uh, so yes, I will do a lot of that in between videos, and then I'll explain in video two what my choices were, okay? Um, but that's what you have to do. And, okay, so how many SO points do you have? Well, you start with 50. So that's how much you have to spend. And how do I know how much something costs? Uh, right here, this is 16 SO points. So if I want little Abner, i got to pay 16 SO points to have this bomber group in my, in my uh, campaign. Uh, these ones cost 8, the Spitfires. And then the, um, it costs 12 for the B-17s. Now, um, one thing I'm going to tell you right away, uh, the, the, uh, the B-24s um, have a uh, longer range of eight, 
and they hold more bomb tonnage. Um, but they uh, and they also uh, hold formation easier. This the lower the number, the better. Um, uh, but they're more expensive. Now there is one drawback. See the durability is zero, whereas the durability is one on the B17. The B17 can only hold six tonnage. It can only have a range of six versus eight. Um, it takes more to get back in formation, um, but the durability is one. So what does that mean? That durability of one means that every time the enemy rolls a die, um, they have to roll one higher to hit you. So this is like a built-in armor and an automatic DRM of minus one to the enemy. Um, one thing that's confusing about this game is sometimes a, a positive number like this is good for us, sometimes a positive number is bad for us. Uh, in this case, it's good for us, and this is bad. So they can hold out a bit, they're a bit stronger and can, re, you know, not take the hits as easy. Um, the other thing I can tell you is like this one comes with a tech of YB40, even though um, uh, we start the game with no technology. Remember we showed that here, that there's no technology? They get the YB40 anyways. So the technology exists on this bomber group alone and none of the others. Um, uh, and here, uh, these little guys, uh, the B-24s, tend to have bonuses against Navy targets. So um, here you can see that naval ports get a plus two with him. But also take note that the recruit level doesn't have that bonus. He, he doesn't get that bonus until um, he's skilled and then it gets better once he becomes a veteran and even better when he becomes an ace. So you need to pay attention to all the different skill levels. Um, and then of course, if you're starting off at a recruit level, you don't have anything. And then he becomes green, and he still doesn't have anything. So um, uh, this one here uh, repairs, but not until the skilled level. And prior to that, he doesn't really do much of anything. Uh, so uh, pay attention to their special bonuses that they get. So like I said, this one gets the YB40, and it looks like he gets it uh, from the start. Yeah, he does. Uh, I don't know what the YB40 is, so we'd have to look that up. Um, and if I come over to here, uh, this is a nice little player aid that came with the game. Sorry for the focus issues. Uh, da -da -da. Don't tell me it's not here. It's not here. So it's got the special notes. It's got the commander tactics, um, which are all good. It explains what the German tech does, which is very helpful. But it doesn't explain our tech. Okay, well that's not very helpful. So then we gotta go into the rule book. Now the tech in the rule book is it's really interesting. They put it in places that it's not its own section, so you gotta like remember where it is. And that's the part that hurts. Or it actually might be written on the token. Let's see what the token says. Here we go. YB40 is an air to air plus two. Oh, I remember this. Um, so this is air to air plus two and air to ground minus one. Uh, the YB40 basically means that um, I think historically this represents um, uh, some of the B17s were, uh, they carried no bombs at all and they were just there to, to destroy fighters. And so they were all beefed up to do that. And so this gets a huge air to air bonus of plus two, but an air to ground of minus one, which is really interesting. And it's on top of uh, this. So, so you put the tech on him, and so he has an air to air plus two, and he actually gets another plus two. So that's plus four now. And then his minus two becomes minus three. So um, at the recruit level, this guy is an awful bomber. Um, but anyways, uh, that's the Berlin sleeper. So you got to bear that, you know, is that what you want or is it not what you want? Anyways, it's, uh, it's part of it. Now, <clears throat> every week, uh, like I said, we do two missions a week, okay? Uh, at the end of every week, uh, we get another 15 SO points, and that's determined here. Every campaign sheet's different. So um, the campaign sheet tells you what the parameters are. So our initial points are going to be 50, and then we're going to get 15 a week. 
which is a very generous number. Um, so uh, I have done this campaign several times, and it's been my strategy to buy nothing but bomber groups to start the game. And then I go through one week, um, and then I get 15 SO points at the end of the first week. Well, right here, this uh, Spitfire only costs eight. So um, I tend to buy the fighter groups after the end of the first week. And because um, you don't need the fighter groups right away, you need the bomber groups to do the damage to their targets. So rather than spending my SO points on a fighter group, I focused on the bomber groups and then uh, bought the fighter groups at the end of the first week. Okay? Um, it's a decent strategy. Uh, I definitely recommend it. It works well. Um, you might be wondering, well, does that mean your planes are exposed? Yes, yes it does. Um, but remember, we're only flying to uh, Netherlands or France or Belgium. And, uh, and the reason I'm pointing that out is uh, the number of Luftwaffe planes that are going to be intercepting you are going to be low in this game uh, compared to maybe other games, uh, other uh, campaigns. So you can sort of get away with it. It's a, it's a little cheaty, but it's not cheaty. You're following the rules. Uh, it's, just, um, it's just a, it's a very nice uh, thing to try. Uh, and if you're not comfortable with that, then just buy one. And then don't buy the other one, because there's only two available. Don't buy the other one until you do that. Okay? It's very easy. Take, take it or leave it. Um, and then the monthly replacement points is 12. This is how you get repairs. So... Um, you take three damage on a bomber group, you know, three of your planes are destroyed, um, you get 12 a week. So you'll be able to replace those three and then you'll have nine more to replace other groups elsewhere. So that's what that means. Uh, the one thing we need to do is it shows that it's August of 42 to December of 42. So we're in 42, uh, we're gonna be week one. Uh, the day does not matter for this mission. Uh, the day is used um, on some campaigns. Like, there's one campaign sheet that's only a seven... It's a one-week campaign. So then you would just use this to represent, you know, day one through seven. Um, and then what do we say? It was August of 42. So we start here. So we're going to have a four-week month. And then we're going to move to three-week months until we get to December. And then it's going to end here. But see, the secondary missions are going to end there. Okay? Um, all right. <clears throat> Next. The initial Luftwaffe squadrons is going to be eight. So we get to determine this before you select your planes, by the way, which is good. So here's what that means. We're going to go over and grab eight of these. One, two, three, four... Five, six, seven, eight. Okay? And then we're going to take two D10s and do some rolling. All right, so I'm going to just put these in my hand. And we're going to roll for this. So we're going to roll two D10s. And six plus four is ten. So this first one goes on the ten. So I'm going to put these down so I can hold the camera with the hand notes, right? So that's where the first one goes. So we're just going to do this until they're all placed. So this one's a 9, and a 7, and by the way, these are all areas we're going to be going to, so this is not good for us. Uh, that's a 5. This is a 12. Five, an eight, fourteen, like so. Okay. So now, um, I always have to look this up. There's a rule that there are certain spots over Germany that are mandatory, meaning you have to have a fighter squadron over them. And then there's a rule for moving them off of the board to there. Uh, I just need to look it up because it, it only moves them if they're at the edge of the map. And um, 
Uh, and then what's interesting is since this mission is this year is only over France and whatnot, being over Germany doesn't help them. In fact, it helps us that because we don't want them over here over France, we want them over there because <laughs> our missions don't go over there. Oh, where are you? Okay, I found it. I'm just trying to find the section that talks about the adjustments. Oh, come on. Is it only at the end of the week? It might be. Oh, it's only at the end of the week, so uh, uh, we're good. We live with it the way it is. Okay, so um, let's keep going with our setup here. The initial Luftwaffe airfields is three. Okay, so why, I know it seems confusing, but what it's saying is, is we're going to draw three, three of these. So this is France. Uh, Germany, remember I hadn't sorted them yet, so this is out. There's, okay, this is obviously the Netherlands. It's AF-16, so let's make sure that's, yep, see, that's still in range. And France. So there we go. We got our three. And so what it's saying is, is target one, target two, target three. So we have three airfields as initial targets. That's what that's telling us. And then there's three initial factories. So same deal. We gotta be in France. So there's one. That's a German one. Yeah, there's a lot more German ones here. Two, three. So I'm just gonna take these German ones and we'll set them off to the side for now. Okay. So, um, so that's the initial airfields, initial factories. The initial Mediterranean theater is a torch. So basically Operation Torch is happening, which is the start. So that would go here, like so. And then the USSR one, I'm assuming, is going to be on Stalingrad there. And the answer is yes. Do we use secondary missions? Yes, we already set that up. And then um, these are the victory points that we need at the end of the game. Now, um, let's just go over something real quick because you may be wondering, well, how do I score and all that other stuff. Every target, um, so this target is going to be worth two victory points. Um, this is all stuff that's going to impact us as we're trying to bomb the target. Um, but the thing that we need to know is we have three factories in the game. This factory has a supply of two. And then we're going to look at the other ones. Uh, supply of two and a supply of two. So all three of them are supply of two. I apologize for the focusing issue here. So with three of them having a supply value of two, um, what we do is we find these tokens here that have two supply written on them. Um, not the red side. You don't want the red side to be two because that's for when they're damaged. So what you do then is you go to the board and this three supply is automatic. The Germans have a natural supply chain that we're, we can never reduce them to zero. But at the end of the month, if we don't destroy these three factories, the Germans are going to produce three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine of these. They're going to make nine of these. Now, some of them are going to support the Mediterranean and Russian theaters. Some of them will not. Um, and then they'll end up here. 
uh, harassing us. So if we destroy the factory, if we damage the factory, this gets flipped over and now it's only producing one supply. And if we destroy it, it's removed all completely. And that's um, uh, a pretty neat mechanic in the game. Um, last but not least, uh, the German Defender gets revealed. And so this is just random who we get, but it's gonna be Commander Schroer. He's helping to defend. He could be replaced at the end of the month. Um, this is the dice that we roll for him uh, to determine how much he's going to intercept our bombers as we're flying over uh, the various targets. Uh, obviously, we want poor response, and we have a 50% chance of that, so that's really good. Um, he has tactics, out of the sun, U-boat support, etc. He uses those tactics, so if we draw tokens or tiles that, that have those tactics written on them, then they will be used. If there's a tactic on a tile that is not here, then they will not be used. So this guy is going to be using quite a few. Um, support 3, 6 plus, I have to look up what that means. Um, can't remember off the top of my head. His Western deployment focus is plus one, which means he wants to deploy in Europe. He doesn't want to support the Mediterranean or the Russian theater. And he starts the game with no technology. Um, uh, this would have been an extra wrinkle for us if he had a technology he was trying to introduce. Okay, so I'm gonna figure out my pilots and do all that off camera. Thanks for watching. Uh, that was a whole hour. This is a big game. Um, there's no uh, getting around it. Um, stay awesome, stay tuned. Uh, I think this will be a fun game for you. Um, so uh, it definitely is for me and um, looking forward to getting this going. So I will, I will cut out and get this uploaded right away. And while it's uploading, I'm gonna get everything else sorted out. Stay awesome.